I am in a beautiful abandoned village in the middle of the desert and people had left this place about 40 years ago and since then a lot of dunes formed this beautiful place. <laughs> So today I'm doing something new here on the channel. I'm vlogging with the new Sony ZV Ethan portable budget vlogging camera. Uh, so far it's one of the cheapest mirrorless cameras in the market. And as you probably noticed, I was using the internal microphone, the Sony ZV E10 internal microphone, and now I'm gonna switch to the Rode Video Micro. <music> And what's more interesting is being half the price of the flagship Sony 6600 camera, the top of the line of Sony mirrorless cameras. So in this video guys, we'll test and compare both cameras side by side, so you make up your mind which one suits you the best. Omahi, and let's get started. The sun is down, and unfortunately there is no more light for this video. To film this video. Alright, let's catch up in the studio. Alright, although the ZV E10 is a vlogging camera, it's also perfect as a walk-around camera because technically it shares a lot of the video and photography features of the other Sony APS-C line. The 6600 camera is mine and the Sony ZV E10 camera is loaned to me from Advanced Media. If you're around, visit their showroom in Dubai. Thank you Advanced Media for helping out making this video. However, this video is sponsored by Pixel RGB Video Light. I used their products for two years and I'm pleased to recommend the new G3 RGB Pocket Light. The color is so accurate and I like the build quality. And the blue one you see always here on my side is from Pixel. We'll keep the links down below. The zv 10 is a small and lightweight camera featuring a flip out screen and the three built-in capsule microphones. It's perfect though for vlogging, travel, and indeed for hiking. The ZV-10 screen goes to the side, whereas the 6600 camera features a tilt-up screen that goes to the top. To me, the 6600 camera tilt-up screen is way more convenient when looking at myself. And the problem though, and when using the 6600 camera with an external microphone, it actually blocks the screen and we are unable to see the screen anymore. But there is a workaround solution by using a hot shoe mount adapter that mounts the microphone on the side. Now since the ZV-10 screen goes the other way, the on-camera microphone is not an issue. Well, to be honest, and when looking at the footage I filmed back in the desert, I discovered that the ZV-10 built-in microphones sound way better than Rode Wireless Go in windy conditions. The microphones are able to pick up and deliver very good audio quality in such a situation. Alright, and this is how the Sony 6600 built-in microphone sounds like. This is how Sony ZV-10 built-in microphones sounds like in such a controlled environment. Finally, this is how the Sony ZV-10 sounds like with Rode Video Micro on-camera microphone. Now, with jumping to the video specs, both cameras share the same sensor size and support 4K as well as 1080 slow motion 120 frames per second. And unlike the 6100 camera, the camera that used to be the entry-level APS-C camera, the new ZV-E10 features a video profile pictures, sign, HLG, and S-Logs. And when it comes to stabilization, the 6600 camera has in-body sensor stabilization, IBIS, while the ZV-10 offers instead a digital stabilization in video mode only. Indeed, video stabilization is great when vlogging and filming handheld, but in the ZV-10, it leaves your footage with a remarkable crop. You probably won't like it when vlogging because it's too much crop, and I believe no one likes his video to be cropped. I don't. Therefore, if you like to use the active steady shot in the Sony ZV-10, it would be a great idea to use the Tamron 11-20mm f2.8 or Sony 
10 to 18 mm f4 because these lenses are quite wide and the crop is somehow acceptable, whereas the crop on the 16 to 50 mm kit lens is too much. Let me show you some examples. So this is Tamron 11 to 20 mm at 11 mm 2.8, and now we'll switch to the steady shot. And this is how it looks like when the steady shot is turned on. So it's like I'm filming at 17 mm instead of 11. Let's try this one. 6600. So now I'm using the internal microphone with the wide angle Tamron 11 to 20 mm at 11 mm f2.8. And if you're wondering, this is how it looks like when using the kit lens at 16 mm f3.5. I think you may prefer using the wide angle lens since it shows more of the surrounding and to me is way better than the kit lens. All right, now let's check how the kit lens looks like when using the active steady shot built in into the camera. Oop, it's much tighter when the active steady shot is turned on. Now, this is how Tamron 11 to 20 mm looks like at 11 mm when using the active steady shot turned on into the camera. Today, mirrorless cameras are great in both videos and stills. And here there is no exception with the Sony ZV-A10. Although it's a vlogging style camera without a viewfinder, it's packed with many professional photography features. Take Aerofocus as an example. Here I'm using Tamron 11 to 20 mm f2.8 and Veltrox 23 mm f1.4. I'm currently preparing the reviews for these lenses and will be published on the channel very soon. Ergonomic. The ZV-8 and camera is built to be compact, small and lightweight. Therefore, it feels cheaper than the 6600 camera. You can immediately tell they are not made from the same material. In fact, the ZV-A10 is 150 grams lighter than the 6600 camera, that's 5.6 ounces. Also, the grip is smaller and there is no viewfinder. And the camera is using the smaller battery, the FW50, which is remarkably has less lifetime than the FZ100 battery. You probably need 2-3 batteries as a backup. Also, the buttons are simplified to suit the new concept. So, as you see, we only get one custom button, whereas the 6600 camera offers 4 custom buttons and more. The ZV-10, on the other hand, features a zoom lever to zoom in and zoom out. But only works with limited lenses such as the kit lens 16 to 50 mm. And instead of the program selection wheel in the 6600 camera, here in the ZV-10, it's replaced with one button switcher. However, both cameras support touch to focus, and the touch screen doesn't work to navigate the menu settings. I believe the 6600 camera and the ZV-10 share the same APS-C sensor. However, I'm wondering if the budget ZV-10 also shared the same performance in low light at high ISO settings. Let's figure out. Both cameras feature aerofocus in video mode. 
See, this is the Aerofocus in video mode, and there is a mark on one of my eyes. It tracks my eye all the time. And this feature is available in both cameras, the 6600 camera and the ZV-E10. However, the product showcase autofocus feature is interesting in the Sony ZV-E10 camera. So let's say I wanna show you a product or whatever. This camera is able to switch the face autofocus off and jump to the product autofocus. Whereas the 6600 camera and all the other APS-C cameras at the moment has such an issue when trying to do the same thing. It's hard to get it done unless your face is totally covered, making the camera forced to switch to contrast or a focus instead. So let's say I want to focus on this guy. So I put it in the front of the camera and here we go. The focus switch to this product. All right, here I am on the 6600 camera and as you see, the product still not in focus and I see the eye focus, the video eye focus is going to my eye and unless if I covered my face totally, so the focus goes here, okay? Finally, I believe the ZV-E10 is a great pocket travel camera for both videos and photography. It's a great camera considering the price, but I will not go with the kit lens, probably I will take it to the next level and get a decent f2.8 lens from Tamron. And beside the vlogging design and features, it's a good startup camera or maybe a second camera. Wow, it's half the price of the 6600 camera, the flagship in the Sony APS-C line. And actually it shares many features in common. What camera do you like more? Leave it in the comment, I would love to know. Here I would stick with the 6600 camera because first I can afford it and also I like the buttons and the build quality. Thank you for watching guys and I hope you find this very helpful and help in making your decision. Show me thumbs up and consider subscribing for more camera key reviews. This was Oma and see you in another one.